Welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is... What time is it? It's, all, it's nine o'clock on a Sunday and it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a deep dive into a particular subject, a particular creator, uh, a particular idea. Maybe it's a brand new trick and I talk about how good the tricks are or how bad they are. Now today, I'm going to try something that we've never done before on Magic TV and I'm going to do a packet trick special. Uh, anybody who's watched this channel for any length of time will know that I love packet tricks. If you don't know what a packet trick is, it's a trick with a small packet of cards. And there are literally a billion different tricks you can do that are classed as packet tricks. Now, there haven't been any out in the last couple of weeks, but in the last couple of months, really. But just like buses, three have come along at pretty much the same time. And these three tricks have hit the, uh, the dealer stands. And uh, I thought, why not take all three of them and do a review show special around them? And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take these three new tricks and I'm going to road test them, talk to you exactly what I think about them. Uh, the positives, the negatives, the highs, the lows, and uh, let you know what I think. So if you love packet tricks, this is definitely a video you want to watch. Here we go with the first packet trick. Okay, so the first packet trick is by Paul Gordon, who is no stranger to bringing out packet tricks. Corner of Piccadilly is one of my favorite tricks of all time. I absolutely love it and never fails to get an incredible reaction. And uh, this particular trick is called Jeepers Creepers. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, I'm covering up this because it's got the, uh, the link on how to do it. But uh, as you can see, it's very no frills packaging. It is literally just an envelope with some cards inside and a sticker on top. Paul has gone for a very no frills approach to the packaging uh, compared to uh, some tricks that come out these days. But it's not about the packaging, right? It's about the content that's inside there. And um, yeah, I mean, this is, there's a lot to like about this trick. Now, before I just say any more, I'm going to play a full performance of this. So you're going to see a performance of me performing this to Michael. Uh, and once I've performed it, I'll tell you exactly what I think. Let's have a look at a performance of the trick. Now, I'll tell you something. Um, this is about playing cards, this, this trick. And uh, I, I, I play cards. I know you don't. So I do play cards. But I'm not a professional gambler or anything like that. Yeah. I only play for fun. And the most of the time I play is with other magicians. Um, because I go to a lot of magic conventions and typically at magic conventions, magicians will stay up till like two or three o'clock in the morning, even later sometimes. It's the only time we get to actually have a social life. And, uh, and we stay up quite late and after the, after the tricks have been done, we'll settle down and we'll play cards and the hardcore few will play cards with each other. The problem is we all cheat. We openly cheat because we're all no sleight of hand. And so it becomes less of a card game and more of a way of trying to cheat without people realising you're cheating. So it becomes chaotic at best. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you a story about something that actually happened to me at the Blackpool Magic Convention. It's the world's largest magic convention. And it was about three o'clock in the morning. I was playing cards in a place called the Ruskin which is a bar just down from the Winter Gardens where the, uh, where the, where the convention is held. And it was about three o'clock in the morning in a downstairs room. I was there with a few other people and we started playing cards and this is what happened. Okay. Now, I know you don't play cards, but you do know how many cards are in a, in a game of poker. If you were dealt cards, how many cards are you? Five? Yeah, I mean, very much depends on the poker because, you know, you can have the flop and everything. But yeah, five is generally the rule. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Just go with it. Um, so, yeah, I've got five cards here. Now, what's important? One, two, three, four, five. What's important is the fact that the cards are um, red backed. Fairly important. Well, actually, it's not important. The most important thing is that there's five cards. Yeah. What is important is that I knew the second I was dealt these cards that the person dealt them me was cheating. Do you want to know how? How? Well, I turned the cards over and I saw a king and I was like, oh, that's good. It's a king. It's a good yeah. card to have, right? And then I checked the card at the back because I always do that and there was another king. And it wasn't like it was a different king. It was a king of spades. I'm like, hang on a minute, there's something weird going on here. And then I looked through the cards and they were all the uh, the king of spades. I'm like, right, you don't get five king of spades in one deck. There is right. some, there is some, there is some absolute, definite, hardcore cheating going on here. <laughs> this is, this is, this is not what you want to do. Um, and and I was like, right, okay, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. So I thought, okay, if they're cheating at me, I'm going to cheat with them. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd switch four of the kings out for some different cards. Okay? okay. And now I did that by palming. Let me give you a demonstration of palming. We'll use one of the kings. Palming is holding the cards secretly in your hand like that. That's palming. Yeah. And what I got to switch, you've got to got another card in your pocket. You take the king, casually put it into your pocket, pull out another card, in this case an ace, which would be quite a desirable card, put it on the that's that's what switching is. Now that's only switching one card. Yeah. 
in order to switch every card except for the king, because I thought, I'll keep the king there. I need to switch the other three cards. Switching three cards is quite difficult. It looks like this. Tell me if you see it. Remember, I've got to take the three cards out, put them in my pocket, grab another three cards, put them in there, all without anybody noticing. I'm going to do it. To do this, you have to use misdirection. Misdirection yeah. means making you look somewhere else. So, for example, I might reach for a drink, and that's when I do the first one. I might scratch my nose. That's when I do the second one. I might point to you. And that's when I do the third one. Did you see it happen? No. <laughs> no, seriously, because now I've switched all the cards. Because now we've got uh, a Royal Flush in Spades, you see. I switched three of the cards. I was like, right, there's no way anybody can beat me. I switched the cards. But you know what? I lost. They caught me cheating. How'd they catch you? Well, because I was... Remember, it was three o'clock in the morning. I'd been drinking all night. I was a yeah. bit drunk. So I did the move really well, but I messed up. The cards that I switched in from my pocket... They all had different back designs. And when I turned them <laughs> over, everybody realized that I cheated. And that's the rule to this is don't play cards with a magician. And also, don't play cards when you're drunk. So there you go. I mean, if they cheated as well, though, can I really say anything? Yeah, they can. Uh, that's, that's cheap as creepers. Now, like a lot of Paul's material, uh, there's a gambling theme attached to this, uh, which... Makes it really interesting. I've tweaked the presentation slightly to make it work more for me. I quite like the idea of talking about magicians playing cards after a long magic convention, kind of pulling the curtain back from the layman on what kind of happens when magicians hang out together. I quite like that as a hook. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of routines that Paul does have a gambling theme around it, and, uh, and this is no exception. Now, uh, I said that the packaging was no frills, the actual uh, tutorial is no frills as well. There is a performance to camera, which is better than nothing. I would have liked to have seen a live performance. And I'll tell you why. Paul is a very engaging uh, performer. I mean, we know this, right? We, one of the things that he prides himself on when he posts his many videos in various different Facebook groups is his ability to connect with, with people. And, and uh, you know, he's been a working professional. He's pretty much his entire career. And it wouldn't have been hard to do a live performance and just gone out to a cafe somewhere and got that. I would have liked to have seen a live performance. That's not happened, that's fine. It is a very no frills approach. It's a very, it's uh, like, a, I think a 10 or a 12 minute Vimeo video where he's got a performance to camera. And then he, he talks about how the various different moves work, the various different uh, um, slights and so on and so forth. I say slights, it's not actually that difficult to do. It's fairly easy, really, when you, uh, when you actually see how it works. And Paul's teaching style is very good. Uh, he glosses over things. And what I mean by that, excuse me, what I mean by that is, although he explains everything, um, it's not an in-depth, blow-by-blow uh, instruction into how a slight works. Uh, you get what you need to know. But if you're a rank beginner, you might want to have, like, a copy of cards, you know, counts and subtleties or a card college or something like that with you uh, because it's not an in-depth uh, explanation of a particular move which is fine um, that's not a problem but just something you might be aware of uh, but yeah I mean he covers everything he explains exactly how it works in fact I think there's only one or two moves in this routine and uh, one move really uh, and as long as you can do that move to uh, you know competently then you're golden. Now, the cards are very well made. You know, the, the stock of the cards are good. They feel good. They're not bicycle cards, but they kind of look a bit like bicycle cards, to be honest. You've got the same angel design. It's just you've got a, what looks like a Black Bull Tower or an Eiffel Tower in the middle instead. Uh, but nobody will notice that, especially as at the end, all of the cards have changed the different coloured backs. Uh, things to like about this, it's, uh, it's relatively easy to do with just one move. Uh, it's an instant reset. So you just put it away and you're reset, ready to go again. Now, you, there's no setup as such, but you do need to have a card in your pocket that you can access. Um, which is a bit of a problem for me, and I'll tell you for why. My top pocket is tied up with Corner of Piccadilly. Uh, and uh, that's really the best pocket to use for this. And because I love Corner of Piccadilly so much, I'd struggle to do this because I need something in my top pocket for this particular routine as well. Now, in the performance, you saw me use a hoodie and have it in my hoodie pocket, which works. And, and to be honest, you could probably do this in your in your outer jacket pocket. So that's probably how I'll do this. Uh, but, you know, there's very little setup. Uh, everything's examinable at the end, which is a big plus. I gave one of Paul's routines many years ago a bad review because it didn't, uh, it was very visual and it wasn't examinable. This is 100% examinable. So as soon as you've laid the cards out, 
Um, you, you know, they're examinable and they can pick them up and look at them and touch them and you just put them away and they're instantly reset. And there's a lot of magic happening as well, which is pretty cool. You know, first of all, they are convinced that these cards are red backed. They're convinced that the cards are all kings. Um, so that when you immediately show that you've got a royal flush, that's very unexpected. And they think the trick's over. It's very magical. And then you proceed to show them that all the backs of the cards have changed as well. And everything's examinable. It's just a really strong trick. I like this. I'm going to give this 90%. Uh, I think that um, workers will love it. It's a very much a workers trick. Workers will love it. Um, but it's a fun routine to practice as well. Very commercial. You don't actually need a table. It can all be done in the spectator's hands. You don't need a table at all. That's something to bear in mind. So it's great for walk around. Yeah, 90%. It's very good. Now let's move from one creator to another. Okay, so the next routine we're going to be looking at is by P3. That's right, Penguin Magic. This is a P3 product and this is by... John Bannon, and this routine is called Spin Doctor. Now, in many ways, this is kind of similar to the routine that you just saw me do, Jeepers Creepers. It's also very different, but there are similarities, which you'll see in a minute. I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to do a performance of it to Michael. So have a look at a performance, and then after the performance, I will show you, uh, well, I'm going to show you how it works, but I'll tell you exactly so, what it is. So I'm going to give you a demonstration in sleight of hand. Okay. Uh, if you were going to play cards, what are the four most desirable cards to have in a game of cards? Four, four aces. Very good. Yeah. There, was, there was a subtle yeah. clue there, to be honest, I yeah. was, uh, which I thought you'd get. Uh, <laughs> now, here's the thing. The ace of spades. The ace of spades. This is, the, uh, this is known as the magician's card. Okay. It's also known as the card of death. Why magicians are associated with the term death, I don't know, but it keeps me awake at night thinking about it. Like I literally wake <laughs> up, cold sweats. It's not a good situation. Um, but I'm going to try and do something with the, uh, with the aces, okay? Okay. I want you to watch, because this is kind of really weird. If I take the packet and twist, do you know what happens? What happens? I'm leaving the ace of spades till last, by the way. Yeah. But if I twist, what happens is one of the aces, the ace of hearts, turns over. There you go. There it is, the ace of hearts. I'll do it again. Maybe you missed it. Look, I'll go slow. If I give it a little twist like this, the Ace of Hearts turns face down, and this time we've got the Ace of Clubs. What? I know it's <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Let me do it again. Look, if I give a little twist, just like that, this time we've got the Ace of Diamonds. What? <laughs> it's weird, right? It's, it, it is weird. That leaves the Ace of Spades. I'm going to do yeah. three amazing things with the Ace of Spades. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the Ace of Spades over. Now, that's not the amazing thing, because you saw me turn it over. That's yeah. not magic. That's stupid. But the first amazing thing I'm going to do is when I turn that Ace of Spades over, do you know what happens? What? Well, the other three Aces turn face up as well. That's the first amazing thing. You see, you turn the Ace of Spades over, uh, the other three turn over as well. The second amazing thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that Ace of Spades vanish and appear back over here. Are you ready? Watch. Are you ready? Yeah. All you have to do is wave your hand over and make the most magical noise you know. Abracadabra. That's what I like, a man of originality. Yeah. Look, if I do this, it's definitely gone. And like I said, it jumps back over here. Look at that. What? <laughs> yeah. The final amazing... <laughs> The final amazing thing I'm going to do is change every single one of these cards like that. Did you see it happen? No. Yeah. But not change them, um, not change them on the front. Change them on the back. And that is absolutely impossible. Oh, and by the way, you can examine everything. So there you go. That is Spin Doctor by John Bannon. I love this routine. I have to say, as much as I love Paul... And, uh, you know, a lot of Paul's material is great. This, out of all of the packet tricks I'm going to be looking at, is my favourite packet trick. And uh, I very much like the structure of it. I've always been a big fan of twisting the aces. Uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, sort of those twisting routines. They, uh, you know, I, I just, I love the fact, you know, when you've got the moment where you go, look, watch my hands, watch my hands. Did you see it happen? Look, it's happened. It's, it's really nice and it builds, which is really good as well. Um, but I love that you're kind of basically doing a, uh, a, a twisting routine. And then at the end, you've got this moment where all of the aces turn face up. 
bang, that's number one. Number two, uh, the ace just vanishes off the spectator's hand or on the table. That's number two. And, uh, and number three, you know, all the backs of the cards change. Now, in that regard, it's very similar to Jeepers Creepers, other than the fact that there's no trip to the pocket for this. So in other words, everything's self-contained. With Jeepers Creepers, I had to go into the pocket. Now, that's fine because that's covered naturally. You know, the whole idea of talking to them about switching a card out gives you total reason to go into the pocket, but you are still having to go. With this, nothing like that. I can literally just bring this packet of cards out and I can go into it. Like Jeepers Creepers, it's completely examinable. Uh, it's not that difficult. There are a couple more moves in this than Paul's routine, um, but everything's taught really well. Uh, it, it, the packaging is very low, uh, it's very no frills compared to Penguin. <laughs> Normal Penguin products are way over the top. Uh, this is very low, uh, no frills, it's literally just this. Uh, but the, the, the tutorial is great. It's about half an hour long. Uh, the first half of it is Eric Tate doing a couple, two or three live performances to real people, which was a joy to watch because Eric is a god of card magic. Um, then after that, uh, after the live performances, uh, what happens then? Yeah, then Eric goes through a kind of a brief overview of the routine before they cut back to the studio and, uh, and, and Eric and John sit down and discuss every single aspect of it. Uh, so the tutorial was fantastic, really well shot, multi-camera, everything. Um, the uh, the actual product itself, the cards are great. You know, the bicycle playing cards, very, very good quality. Um, they'll last as long as a normal pack of cards will. Um, once you've bought it, to be honest, if you wanted to make a replacement, you could relatively easily. It wouldn't be the same cards, but you could actually make a replacement once you know what you're doing. Um, and, you know, you're having an extra card. There's a couple of moments that are discrepant in this routine. There's three moments that I can think of that are quite discrepant. But, you know, that's what John Bannon has done his entire life, his entire career in card magic. He has been an expert at taking these discrepant moments and just completely uh, structuring and routining a, a, an effect in such a way that people don't suspect or detect that discrepancy. You know, but there are some discrepancies in there. If you're worried about that sort of thing, that's something you should be aware of. Uh, but they're completely covered. I mean, the tutorial goes through that with a fine tooth comb. Uh, but yeah, it's it's good. It's really good. Um, it's it's very very strong. Uh, relatively easy to do. Um, instantly reset. Examinable. No trips to the pocket. It's good. I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it ninety nine percent. Uh, if you like packet tricks, this has got everything that a packet trick needs to have. And also, the other advantage of this is, uh, and again, I don't want to draw comparisons to Jeepers Creepers because that's a great trick in its own right. But something that you should be aware of is, like with Jeepers Creepers, if you think about it, you're showing the cards. There's two moments of magic. One, your royal flush appears. Two, your um, uh, the cards turn to different colours on the back, right? With this, if you think about it, there's about eight moments of magic. The aces turn over one at a time, then they all turn over together. The card turns blank. Uh, the ace jumps back over there. All the aces, uh, all the backs change. There's a lot of moments of magic in a routine um, that's not that difficult to do. It's why it gets 99%. I love it. I think it's really good. Uh, let's have a look now at the final packet trick on this week's review show special. Okay, so the, the final trick on this week's review show special, we've got a white envelope, we've got a sticker on the front, that can only mean one thing, Paul Gordon is back with another packet trick. Now this one is called The Ultimate Sting uh, by Paul Gordon, uh, The Ultimate Sting. Uh, and ironically, in the crediting, Paul actually credits the inspiration to this trick as a John Bannon trick. So it's really kind of interesting that I've reviewed a Paul Gordon trick, then I've reviewed a John Bannon trick, and now I'm doing a Paul Gordon trick that's inspired by a John Bannon trick. Um, I'm not going to say anything about this. I'm just going to show you a performance, and then we'll talk about what we think. So let's have a look at The Ultimate Sting by Paul Gordon. Very good, thanks. I'm going to give you an example of how to cheat at cards. This is not a trick. This is a lesson. It's an education. This is less of a trick, more of a lecture. I'm lecturing you. I've always I'm, wanted to cheat at cards. There you go. Well, now you're going to find out. And um, it, it's quite complicated. So I'm going to use a few cards. It'll make it easier for me to explain. Okay. Now, how many cards are here aren't important. What's important is the fact that all these cards are red-backed. And also, this is not like the sort of cards that you would have in a game of cards, because all of the cards are aces. Now, if you were playing cards and you had nothing but aces in your hand, people would think that you are cheating. 
Yeah. But it's going to allow me to use certain techniques and teach you certain techniques. So what I'm going to do to teach you this is I'm going to turn, I'm going to alternate face up and face down with all the aces. So we're going to have some of the aces go face up and some of the aces go face down. So in other words, if you look through, you can see face up, face down, face up, face down, all the way through. Is that fair? Yeah. So we're going to put some of the cards here, some here. Now what I have here are four cards. Two face up, two face down. Now the first thing that you need to be able to do if you're playing cards and you want to cheat is you have to be able to turn a card over secretly without people realising it. Let me show you what that looks like. You can clearly see that two of the aces are face up and two of the aces are face down, right? Yeah. This is what it looks like. All you have to do is give it a little twist. That's the move. It's the twist. Now, it doesn't look like anything. If you're playing cards, that wouldn't look like anything, right? But what I've just done is turn one of those aces over, you see, because now I've got three aces face up and one ace face down. Now, in case you missed it, I'll do the twist again. Watch. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but that twist allows me to turn a card over. Now, once you get good at that, you have to do it at the same time. So I've got another yeah. four cards here, two face up, two face down. You can do both cards at the same time. I can do any amount of cards that I want to. It's the same thing. It's the same technique. Uh, you can just do it with however many cards you want. You see, now they're all face down. What? I know, it's kind of confusing, <laughs> right? However, there isn't... So once you've learned that, that's the one technique. And that's a very useful technique to learn. But it's not the most important technique. The okay. most important technique, there's two more techniques. The most important technique is the switch. That's the ability to switch one card for the other, right? So if, this is how that looks. Watch. Did it look like I switched? Did it look like anything? It looked like you did something. I yeah, don't know but what. what I did is I switched <laughs> uh, five of the aces. What I did is I switched them when you weren't looking for a, uh, a royal what? flush uh, <laughs> in spades, which is, to be honest, the best... Um, the best hand you can get in poker. That's a really important technique because obviously if I can do that without you realising it, it means that uh, I'm going to win <laughs> the game, right? Now, the other thing that you need to be able to do really is, as, a, as a really good gambling expert, you need to be able to do pickpocketing. Yeah. You know why? Because obviously it's useful as you play. It, just in case you don't win, I can take all of your stuff and I'll still win <laughs> even though I've lost, right? And that looks like this. Watch. You see the aces? Um, it looks like this. Now I've got uh, your credit card, your credit card, your credit card, your credit card. Uh, I'll keep all of your money. I've won the game, so I've got all that money there. And that's how to cheat at cards. And also, public warning, never play cards with me. <laughs> so there you go. That's the ultimate sting by Paul Gordon. Now, what do I think of this routine? Well, I think it's very, very good. Um, first of all, uh, you don't, again, like both of the other routines, you don't need a table. Uh, so it can be done completely in the spectator's hands, which is great. Um, also, uh, you know, I, I said it was an advantage in the second routine, so I'll say it's an advantage in this routine. There's no trip to the pocket at all. So you're literally self-contained. You take these cards out of your pocket and you're good to go. Uh, and there's way more moments of magic than in Jeepers Creepers. You show that they're all red back. You show that they're all aces. Um, and then, you know, with a logical presentation, you have this moment where you've alternated them face up and face down. And you've kind of got this moment where the face up and face down cards transpose. So you end up with all the face up cards over there, all the face down cards over there. But that sequence, as well as looking magical, sets you up for the finale. So then at that point, immediately, you have this killer finale where um, the face down cards have turned into um, uh, uh, a royal flush. So you've got a royal flush. And then you have the aces, and the aces turn into the credit cards. Now, the way Paul does this, he shows the backs of the cards as having credit cards, uh, which is fine. I did a through the fist flourish and, uh, and showed there were credit cards. Um, I quite like the through the fist flourish a little bit more. Um, I'm not trying to hide the fact that there are aces on the other side, but I, I'm trying to kind of make them believe that they have turned into kind of uh, pictures of credit cards. But uh, these these are very well made. These are great. I mean, Paul's gone to a lot of expense to uh, to make these. He talks on the tutorial about how good these look, and they do look really, really good. And again, great quality stock. Uh, the reset is great. I mean, the, the, the reset is literally that. You just need to do that and do that, and you reset. So it's an immediate reset. Everything's examinable. Um, so as soon as you finish the trick... Uh, they're all on the table, everything's examinable, you put it back together, it's an instant reset, and uh, and you're good to go for the next table. So, I mean, what's what's not to love about this? This is a really strong trick. Uh, it's got an engaging plot that absolutely makes sense. 
It's uh, relatively easy to do. There's a few more moves than in uh, Jeepers Creepers. You're going to do a Hammond count and you're going to do an Elmsley count and a couple of other moves. Nothing difficult, nothing, nothing difficult at all. Uh, but again, Paul's teaching style, he goes through everything uh, very, very well. It's very clear. He explains things very, very clearly. Um, if you're a brand new beginner, like any of these routines, um, you might want to have like some other sources on some of the counts, but you'll you'll get it from what Paul says. Absolutely not a problem. Just like in the previous routine that Paul brought out, very no frills approach to the tutorial. Uh, it's a performance to camera and then a no frills tutorial of just the hands and and you see what's going on. But to be honest, that's all you need. Uh, it would have been nice, like I said, to get a live performance. I think that one of the reasons that. Uh, John Ballon's routine has been elevated for me is because I got to see Eric performing it live and seeing those live reactions, knowing Paul's capable of doing that as well. It would have been nice to see a live performance from Paul. We didn't get that. Hey ho, not a problem. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a really good routine. Very, very strong. What I plan on doing uh, is I'm planning actually taking this out uh, and the, 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 I, I haven't worked any of these three yet in gigs, but I plan on um, I plan on taking the ultimate sting and spin doctor out first of all, and alternating uh, alternating groups between them, seeing how they play, and then bringing jeepers creepers in a little bit later on. But there you go, um, it's a great routine. It's uh, it's getting ninety six percent from me. Uh, it's really strong. Like I say, it ticks all the boxes. No table required. Fairly easy to do. Uh, instant reset, examinable, lots of moments of magic. There's nothing to not love with this trick. Very well-made product. Uh, don't let the no frills look of the product fool you. Uh, it's a real worker, as you would expect from Paul Gordon. So uh, yeah, it's another great trick. So there you go, guys. That is another review show special in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me here on Magic TV. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is there a particular trick that you like the best? I would love to know what you think. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Now, I'm going to be back again very, very soon. I'm going to be back again uh, tomorrow with a whole bunch more videos. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, please go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. You can go and check that out and uh, get access immediately to, uh, to everything. Everything that you need. You can get access immediately to everything you need. There's over 200 tricks we've just uploaded uh, a couple of weeks ago. An ultimate guide to getting restaurant works. There's a whole bunch of stuff going up every single uh, fortnight. Uh, but yeah, go check it out if you haven't already done so. www.thenetrix.com. I'll be back again soon with another video. Thanks very much for watching me and joining here. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.